Yeah, here's probably the the best view. I'll show you another view where you can kind of see the Alps and the Apennines kind of stacked in the in the in the, uh, in the background there. Uh, if you look at that in the far left, just past the the green uh, valley and, and and pinched valley there, you can see this the um, uh, some of the Apennine Mountains. It's kind of a darker shade of of a uh, blue there on the left and then directly in the back right underneath the cloud you see the cloud in the center of the screen right below the cloud and you might be able to, if you have a good good uh, screen you could see the um, the Alps uh, right there and that's the northern part of the world. so facing north here incredible wonderful clear day and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pan around here and show you another shot of the uh, of the Tuscan mountain chain that we were discussing then we have yeah then we have the another and again this is kind of facing south these are some of the mountain clusters and and um yeah, that's good. all right i'm gonna just stop here a little bit catch my breath uh but if you think about um uh the pride that italians uh take the painstaking steps they take to produce the farm these incredible ingredients here in italy um, there's something called unconscious name recognition and and uh, uh things we don't things we use every day we may just forget that it's they're truly italian type ingredients you know, broccoli radicchio uh, zucchini uh, different uh, different names we use and they're just an incredible italian ingredient a lot of sense of place type names given to uh, wonderful products. You know, you have salami from, from Genoa, mortadella, um, uh, what else, Parmigiano Reggiano, the list goes on and on. There's so many different uh, cheeses and, and cured meats uh, that come from um, come from Italy. It's fascinating and it just, it just shows you the pride they take and a lot of those techniques that they use to produce those cheeses, um, some of them are mimicked and copied in the U.S. Um, and some some uh, can't be, you know, when you, if you're thinking about Parmigiano Reggiano, the the actual that has the stamp on it, the official, the le legitimate Parmesan, it has to come from from the region of Parma. It, it has to use the milk uh, from from the, from those cows in the, in, in Parma. Um, I guess the only similarity I can think of is if you're talking about in the U.S., you're talking about bourbon. It has to come from Bourbon County, right? Uh, but again, over in Italy here, there's there's all, there's a multitude of different ingredients that have that requirement. It's beautiful. And I remember rattling off, there's about 18 to 20, probably even more known um, cultures or civilizations of people that invaded and worked their way through Italy. Uh, but really none of them, very few actually had an influence and, and, and laid down roots in cuisine. Uh, those are mainly done, uh, the, the major influence was done by those three that I just mentioned, the Etruscans, the Greeks, and the Saracens. So, but again, we, we, I was talking about the farming, the experience that the Italians had on, on the land, knowing, you know, all about the different ter terroir, the, the slopes, the altitude, the heights, uh, you know, the, the seasons of Italy uh, became masters of, of certain crops. And what they did was a lot of those ingredients, all those ingredients that they got from the Americas and from the Saracens, um, they, they made even better, of course, right? That's the Italian way. They took these ingredients and made them even better. So, yeah, you know, um, the Italians got the tomatoes from the Americas, but they certainly um, modified it, genetically modified it, certainly, uh, and turned it into the beautiful uh, tomato that we know, that we now eat. Right? Same thing with rice. Uh, rice was brought by the Saracens, uh, historians say, to Italy. Uh, but the Italy again, Italy made improvements on that through just their master farmers in the area. Um, and uh, there's a little interesting story about how Thomas Jefferson actually stole <laughs> some rice and brought it back to the U.S. Um, there's a famous um, uh, French dish and that's in a lot of bistros, uh, petit pois, I think is what it's, what it's called. I think that's what it's called. Uh, the, the, the story on that is that it was stolen from Genoa in 1660 and brought to, to France. So just green peas, right? The green peas were so darn good in Italy that uh, even the French were, were, were uh, bringing back ingredients, right? So the Italians, you know, just known for their ability to take ingredients and farm it and make improvements and just turn it into just a, a beautiful, a beautiful uh, ingredient and recipe. You know, spinach, Italians really known for having the best spinach, asparagus, the best artichokes. Um, incredible. Uh, and actually, too, during the Roman times, 
uh, some of the first books on agriculture were written by, uh, written by Italians. This is always good to see. You're driving by the road, walk down several of these roads. Uh, let's see, I'm here in uh, Tuscany. The agriturismo, hospitality. Uh, just a glorified, beautiful Tuscan version of uh, bed and breakfast, right? And, uh, and also you get to sometimes go on tours of what they're growing or planting or harvesting. Uh, you, go to, you go down that road there and you see a beautiful Tuscan house. How would that be, how would that be for a place to stay? Incredible. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'm coming back and you can see, you got a beautiful shot of Volterra from here, right on the uh, top of the mountain. I'm probably about a mile away, well, I'm not quite a mile away from CF, and then CF Learning Center is about a mile and a half south down the hill from Volterra. You see the top of that? That's Volterra, ancient city of Volterra. Beautiful. Yeah, I wanted to show you this. One of the thing that's one of the things that's very, very common in uh, in Italy, just by the boatload, are these bramble bushes. You see that these are blackberry, raspberry, bramble bushes. Um, usually, like around a lot of fencing on in and around farms and properties. Very protective, very thorny. You don't ever want to get caught in these bramble bushes. Uh, but they're also beautiful too because they produce uh, blackberries and raspberries and other dark skin fruits. I mean, look at these things. Let me see if I can zoom in, zoom up, zoom, zoom in on one there. Yeah, so just kind of want to wrap this up. I hope you enjoyed class with me in Tuscany. Um, and uh, hey, I hope this uh, short little video encourages you to become part of our study abroad program. Uh, this is a fantastic trip. We're going to be here another week and then uh, we're on to Lyon, France. We're going to be on the Paul Bocuse campus uh, in Lyon, France for another couple weeks. So all in all, four weeks uh, and students are having a great time. I just passed, um, I should have, I should have interviewed them. I just passed two of my students who were on a hike, a similar hike. Uh, they just passed them in the road. So, um, ciao, ciao from Tuscany.